Hello everyone, so today a very useful data structure, the stack. A stack can retain elements for you in a very certain way and you can retrieve them in a very specific way as well. So we said it's following the principle of last in first out. So it's very much like a deck of cards when sometimes you put cards on the top of the deck but then when you retrieve the card, it's gonna be the card on the top of the deck. So let's see how we can simply implement it in Go and see why is it so useful. Okay, let's create a module called stack and uh, we will define a simple uh, main application. Okay, so we have uh, our main package here, so we can define a struct called stack, and that struct will hold a field content, which is just a slice of int. Just for convenience, we will create a display method. Then we can see the content of a stack at any point of time in our main program. So you're just gonna display stack content. So we have an instantiation of stack into the variable s and then we can invoke display on s. There you go, so you can see that it's an empty slice. Okay, so now um, how to insert an element in your stack. So if you remember the video on the queue, it's very similar to a queue. We will just append the, the new item into the content. So same as a queue, we will use the terminology push to insert an item. So here item are int and in go, it's that simple, we just invoke happened on it so stack.content then the new item if you try that we can push some int in it and display so there you go so you can see we are inserting 12 in the stack then we can add more so we have 12 and 8 so 12 will be index 0, 8 will be index 1. So far so good, very simple. And then if you remember the terminology for the queue, retrieving an item is pop. So pop doesn't take any argument, but it does return the int you take out of the stack. So remember during the introduction, I said it's following the last in first out so it means that the first item you're gonna pop is in fact your last item so in go your last item index will be the length of the slice minus one and then the item itself will be stack content with the last item index and then we need to remove that last item from the content slice we will just achieve that by mutating it by grabbing everything except the last index and then we return the last item so very straightforward in go so let's try pop so if we pop once so you see eight number eight came last and then when we pop it it let's um log the result of pop so then we can see 8 so you can see 8 was indeed popped out of the stack then if we do if we invoke pop twice you're gonna see 8 12 and then the stack is empty right so there's a bit of um, caveat in the pop function where if your stack is empty you're gonna have a panic because you're gonna 
as for an item which is out of range of your slice. So in Go, you have a awful panic. So let's modify a bit the pop function in a Go fashion. So let's just say if the stack is empty, we will return zero, which is the nullable value of an int and an error. So I can just craft an error by errors.new. I can change the function signature. So instead of returning just an int, we return now an int and an error. And in case of success, we return no error, line 44. So you can see here, I pop once 8 nil, twice 12 nil, and then lastly, if I invoke pop on an empty stack, it will return me zero but an error. So it's up to the consumer to check that there's no error on the pop function before using the popped value. So very classic Go fashion pattern. Okay, so um, that was our little introduction to the data structure stack. So obviously you can gear up that struct a bit more by giving it some extra functionalities like is it empty or is it full if you decide to limit your stack for instance or you could also have the function peak sometime to just have a sneaky look at what's on the top of your stack so there's many improvements that you can have but essentially push and pop are the very powerful pattern you know you need to know for a stack it's very useful for any um, type of deck of cards, as I said, like money pile or pile of books um, or these kind of things. The thing with stack and queue is to recognize that you need those data structure when it comes to C and it simplifies your life and you can just abstract the problem to some non data structure and you can reapply it as you I just you just saw in go it's that simple with the manipulation of slices and indexes so if you enjoy the video like and subscribe so then i understand that this is this kind of content that you enjoy and happy coding